<laughs> and another another scary sounds. Um, yeah. So today, uh, we are let's let's pause that. So today we are doing another episode of Draw Toys. But as you can tell from the date of the upload of this, and indeed the name of the episode, this is a Halloween special. Uh, but but as usual, I'm not on my own as I'm joined with three guests. Dan. Hello. Tim Ooh. and Tom. Oh, hello. Who will be <laughs> Ooh, sensual? Oh. And they will be joining me on this spooky delve into sp- spooky dra- drawing things today. Is um, it just the four of us, or is there a secret cause? Uh, li- listen out, uh, th- listen out throughout the episode. Does there may be a secret ghost? Uh, there isn't, but if you hear one, let me know. Uh, yes, so today, as with uh, the previous episode of Draw Toys, um, we are all going to go draw some stuff uh, with various, you know, given various time frames, and then we'll compare at the end. Uh, so I'm going to pop the rules up on the screen at right now. But so the rules are fairly simple A, an image is posted. We are then given three different time frames, 30 seconds, two minutes, and 10 minutes to draw that image. Um, and then we post them in sequence at the end uh, while giving each of them a title or a name. Uh, but today, obviously, there is a slight uh, variation as well because all of these subjects are spooky. Uh, don't don't start a count of how many times I've said spooky already because it's probably in the dozens. Um so yeah, so as with last time, basically, I've got four different folders this time, not five. So I've got four different intensities of subject, basically. So level one is a very easy Kirby-esque kind of thing. It's a ball with eyes or whatever. And level four is quite involved, quite detailed. It's going to be impossible to draw in 30 seconds, basically. So... I'm going to do something different today. Instead of asking one of you to choose an intensity, because it might not be as interesting if we just stick to particular intensities, I'm going to use a random number generator. Oh, shit. So, between one and four, I'm going to do this three times as we have three subjects this episode. So... That'll be four, four, and four, then. (laughs) Let's generate the first number. Oh, it's one. Okay then. Wow, uh, that is quite amazing. Right, cool. So, I have uh, in my folder the various intensity things. Let me load this up. Bless our and Jesus. Okay, so I have brought up the level one folder. Now I only have two subjects of each uh, because statistically it's very unlikely we're going to get three rolls of the same level. Uh, but if if we do, we'll just roll again. So, I have two choices in my level one folder. Now, you guys can't see what's in my folder, obviously. And this time, I want Tom to choose between number one or number two. I'm going to go for a number two, then. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. So, I'm going to be posting this in our art channel, as it were, on uh, Discord. Oh. Oh, that's a bit scary. Okay, so I've just popped it up on screen for the viewers as well, of course. Our first challenge for tonight is the spookiest of all paranormal entities. It's Casper, the unfriendly... Oh, he's a friendly guy. That's not as exciting, is it? Well, not have you ruin Casper's good name, okay? He's a friendly ghost. Uh, So, we have our first subject of Casper. So we are now going to go off and set ourselves this challenge for 30 seconds, and after we're done, two minutes, and after that's done, ten minutes, and then we'll be back to show you guys our results and compare and generally ridicule ourselves and each other. So we'll see you guys in a minute. All right, so we have returned. We have drawn uh, three images of Casper, the friendly ghost. So... I've got the image of Casper that we want to draw. That was our muse, as it were. 
Uh, so we are now in sequence going to post our results as usual. I shall go first. Um, post mine. So hold on, Lance. So this is my thirty-second piece. I call help me. <laughs> he looks like he's like, oh well, <laughs> oh well. See, I was, I, I, I was seeing him as like an Oliver kind of like, please, sir, give me ghost food. Uh, I messed yeah. up where his pupils are, I think, which, you know, didn't help. So I'm, I'm reserving too much judgment until it's going to be a very comic situation otherwise. Mm. I called the second one Casper Zoomed because I think this might be my best Casper piece. Ooh, yeah. I, I, I yeah. could see that and say that's definitely Casper. Uh, and I, that's I, a really good two minute job. I didn't get the tail end. I, I, I would have drawn it in the background if I had more time. But like, that is actually my best one. <laughs> so the third, okay. the, the third one I call Casper's been to the gym. Oh God, yeah. So <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't get his face right. And so he just ended up looking like muscular Squidward from that episode of Spongebob. <laughs> like, I couldn't for the life of me just get the top of his head and the bottom to, like, work out. So he just looks hench for some reason. He looks a bit like the Michelin man. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. It, so, basically, I gave up with about two minutes to go and I just cheated him. Because I was like... And then, in the last, like, 20 seconds, I went to dye the background, but I must have left a piece open, because it all went purple. So I was like, ah. no, okay, everything's white. Fuck this. <laughs> uh, so those are my, as I said, the set, the two-minute piece is the best, easily. Definitely. Like, th that is... I, I, the two-minute piece is quite impressive. Uh, right, so who wants to go next? I'll, I'll go next. Okay. Um... <laughs> I call my first one. No, just, 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 just no. So just, it's just called no. It's just called no. N O. It can't be that mm. bad. Oh God! <laughs> oh, 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 monkey, god? monkey, but ghost. <laughs> I I couldn't get the head shape right. I couldn't get the eyes. <laughs> I it, it, too much for me to handle. Oh. I cracked under the pressure. I mean, it looks like Casper didn't actually isn't a friendly uh, boy ghost he's actually in his mid uh, mid uh, 60s he looks like a possessed monkey nut <laughs> Casper the sleep paralysis demon there you go um, the second one I call you know what this is Casper <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay also yeah, yeah. a little bit like um, Casper is inhabiting the body of Thomas the Tank Engine <laughs> Yeah. Oh god, yeah. Well, so yeah. I'm thinking in an artistic manner. Maybe he is a wisp of smoke and this is his like physical form that he takes on. Yes. I'll I'll add to that. Maybe he's uh you know, a sperm cell. Yes. <laughs> well, 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 it's not really adding on to it. No. Uh but, you know, there's <laughs> you should mention that oh dear um, number three i call oh, it, no. it, it's not lewd it's it's um i call this one casper the friendly toast <laughs> <laughs> but it does, i did realize after drawing it it does look because i've made him so thin <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see I, where one might get that idea a little bit yeah i think it's actually like Compared to the other one, you put in, you refined it a bit and like put in like uh, blemishes here and there. So, and especially the eyes. So, yeah, I, I, I genuinely do think that that is pretty good. That is very emotive. Like, I, I could tell you yeah. it's Casper from a glance. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, Casper the friendly ghost. Cool. He's <laughs> very happy to be on some toast. Also, I couldn't decide whether it's a tiny Casper or a fucking gigantic piece of toast. I like to think of. Do you guys remember when we were young, there was a there was like a toaster um press or like a waffle press that you put bread or like pancakes or waffles in and it stamped Thomas the Tank's face on it. Ah uh, yes yes yes. 
So I the Tally Tubby one. Ah, there we are. So I'm picturing a, I'm picturing a Casper version, basically. Yeah, yeah, I like that. There you know. Go. Nice. Thank you. Uh, who wants to go next? Oh, yeah, I'll go next because I've got something on theme. Okay. Uh, so, um, so the first Casper um, is going to be called. Casper the Friendly Seaman. Okay. Oh, 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 I'll, uh, I'll take that back to him. <laughs> he, he looks like a friendly snack. You know, he's just uh, yeah, like... Yeah. It's a snake. It's a well, snake. Yeah, or, a, or a worm. Yeah. Yeah? Or, um, or... Or a illustration of the eighties band, uh, White Snake, after never having listened to any of their music and just hearing their name once in a conversation. There we go. Yeah, there's um not enough scantily clad women to be White Snake, but okay, no. <laughs> okay, so the next one is Casp. He's got he's got like <coughs> jewels, so. I'm gonna call it Casper with Jowls. <laughs> Casper with Jowls. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It does look like he's got mumps. <laughs> <laughs> and like his his right arm looks like he's kind of to twisting it slightly, but you know it's. Yeah, he looks really like he's good. giving a thumbs up to someone far away in in the distance. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, Steve. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. But other than that, I think the form was pretty good. Like his body, yeah. You know, it's a lot. Uh, uh, you know, compared to the last one, it's definitely had his fair share of food and stuff. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that first <laughs> one, I knew I couldn't do it. So, and I kind of messed up. So I was like, right, what can I do in thirty seconds, real quick? Very <laughs> imaginative. Um, uh, something resembled. To look yeah. a little bit like the um glob de la gook. What's it called, Dan? The glob 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 glob. Wait, wait. It's the. I have to say it like in the video. So I'm the glob go glob glob lab. There you go. Cool. <laughs> Start starting to get to those levels. Yeah, it it it's on the boundary. Hi, so love... the next one. As always, I took inspiration off uh, some unofficial artwork. But okay. uh, this is from a director video kind of sequel uh, that was called Casper the Unfriendly Ghost in Gangster's Paradise. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is definitely yeah. I I th- I think you. It looks like uh, was the a Roger from American Dad? A little bit, yeah. Well, or um, Porky Pig slightly Porky as well. Pig. Like with the hat and stuff, I don't know. It's... Yeah. I, to be well, fair, it, he he did get feet in the cartoon at some points. So. Yeah, yeah I. They look like that. It looks like one of those T-shirts you find down in Camden. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah absolutely. Or um. Included with the um, you've clearly put the text, then the build tool, not the other way around. Um, mm, guilty. Yeah. <laughs> It, but, adds to the, um, it adds to the essence of the, uh, the picture, I think. I like yeah. the artistic spin on it. You know, yeah. it's it's bringing it to the modern youth. I um, mean, I mean, it's good. I I, I think uh, him scowling with the Glock and the chains, <laughs> you know, and the hat. It's a snapback hat, I think. So, you know, he he'll fit right in the, the hood. Yeah, it it brings it all brings it all together. Thank you, Tom. That was very educational. Dan, would you like to go next? Because you're okay. the only person left. So if you don't want to go next, then that's ruined everything. Credits rolled. <laughs> no, right. So this one is I'll call Cospol. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's it's the abstract of Casper. It's sort of. Basically, someone's gone to take a photo of, like, a summer sky and it's like, there's a ghost in that picture. It didn't come out very clear, but there's a ghost there. Yeah, I think it's like someone's thought they might have saw a cloud that looked like Casper and they were, like, trying to prove it, but... Nice. Yeah, basically, I didn't have enough time. Oh, really? Yeah. It's very, very abstract. Yeah, Yeah. I I like it. I, I, I wouldn't have that as a back 
background wallpaper. But if someone did want to, feel free to download it somehow. Very avant-garde. Yeah, nice. Thanks, Dan. Okay, this next one is just called Casper. Okay, he looks a bit spooky. Not going yeah, to lie. He looks like a skeleton ghost. He looks a little, yeah, a bit, a bit like a sort of skeletal was possessed by Casper. Also, it looks yeah. like, like <laughs> it looks like a continuation of the other picture. It looks like this is like further down. Ah, the yo, yeah, it's like what's that up there? Oh my god, it's a skeleton ghost. Oh shit, it's getting closer. Do we need to run? And what's he going to become if we allow ten minutes more? Uh, this one I'll call. Who you gonna call? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm glad Hello. someone did that, you know, because yeah. I was thinking about it, but I thought it'd be too difficult. Literally never crossed my mind, but yeah, I'm, I'm liking the um, the, I, I like the detail of the electricity and like the particle effect and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> very, very. Also, I, I like the whole you did use the um. The sort of poster advertisement for uh, was it Ghostbusters two that he had the who you're gonna call and the the O was the Ghostbuster yeah, symbol. I, like I did, I was debating of adding the ghost in, but uh, I was coming up to the three minute mark and I was just like, nah. Yeah. Made the right choice. That's that's really cool. I like that. Thank you, Dan. But but who are you gonna call? Um, I'm gonna call the guy who sung the Ghostbusters theme. Well, if what you <laughs> if what you're looking for is some quality Pokemon card openings and anime statue reviews, then why not call Imminent Tortoise by hitting the subscribe button below? That's not calling me, but I, it's the best plug I could think of. Right, okay, let's move swiftly on for that. Thank you, everyone. So, next up. We have round two of the random number generator thing. Is everyone ready to see what intensity oh we're going to be drawing next? Yes, Ooh, that, that sounds like there's a ghost in the room. It is. Let's hit this button. Four. Okay, then. Oh, we, we go from hey, one... We're going from one extreme to the other. Possibly. There is a chance. So... Let me load up my number four folder. Okay, so we have two choices again. Uh, so this time I'll leave Tim choose. Tim, number one or number two? I, much like Tom, I'm also going to have to go for a number two. Oh, I'm, I'm genuinely kind of glad here because I... So th this is something I was kind of excited uh, for. This is our number four intensity drawing. Ghost Rider. So, uh, oh, obviously, dear. for the for those who don't know, it's Ghost Rider from the Marvel comics. Uh, yo, I I love Ghost Rider. What what a Nicolas Cage film that was. I've never read the comics. They're pretty good. Um, I mean, well, I've not read all of the comics, obviously, because it's been going since like the seventies. But yeah, it's it it's very fun. It's uh, basically, imagine Judge Dredd, but it's in hell, and it's demons and not criminals. And, so it's uh, uh, and oh, who's that uh, stunt driver that was, no, stunt man that was really famous? Evil Knievel. Like, Evil Knievel, yeah. Yeah, basically. Right, anyway, so we're going to go and uh, do our best to draw Ghost Rider now in uh, 10 minutes, 2 I'm minutes, really excited and 30 this. seconds. Yeah, no, it, it should be pretty cool. Um, and also, also fitting with the Halloween theme. So we'll see you guys in 12 and a half minutes. All right, so we are back. We have finished drawing, uh, as you can tell. <laughs> I think drawing is a, is a generous term. <laughs> so uh, on screen is, so this is the reference image I posted of Ghost Rider. Obviously, as with the other artworks, we don't have to replicate this piece of art. Uh, you know, we can do our own thing, but we have to kind of keep it in fitting with this, basically. So, um, as always, I'm going to go first. Um, so this I call Firehead, but spelt Fire H-E-D. 
<laughs> and it, it, it's drawn by me when I was three and sent in because I like Ghost Rider. Looks like a Mad Max character. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not exactly far off, is it? I don't know. I was going to say one, one of those troll dolls. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, oh, just a very chunky boy. Like he's a, he is an absolute unit. Yeah, I am in awe at the size of this land. <laughs> so drawing two, I call, I call Poundland Zombie Punk. Oh, he looks I like that. happy. Yeah, I like that. So I like, like he's, I I didn't have much time to do the fire. To be honest, I ran fully out of time, but. He, he, he looks friendly. Yeah, I but... mean, and uh, you know, he's it's uh, it's menace. It looks menacing, but on the inside, he's he is. He like, just wants uh, friends. He yeah. <laughs> basically he, he look looks, he looks like he was invited to a Halloween party, but he had literally half an hour to get to the shop, buy something, get home, and then go. Hey, this <laughs> this isn't a chain. This is a French baguette. I don't oh, know. Sorry. There's something about it. That makes me think it's some sort of grease sort of thing. He's gonna like <laughs> come around you with his gang and start clicking, and then hit the chain at your feet. He looks Do you know what I like mean? He just has no idea that someone's like set a fire on his head. Like, oh, 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 <laughs> god damn it! He's a very friendly ghost rider, you know. Yeah. Um, and then third one. I call Marvel's friendly ghost rider because he he just looks like a bit of a pal, to be honest. Yeah, I um, like that. I like that. So I tried. Uh, I basically, if I did a bit more time, I'd have coloured in the bike in the background, which is the source of the other bit of fire. Because I I, I, like I drew the wheels and stuff. He he's okay. He's very chunky. He's the only reason he's wearing red and not black is because i wanted black as the background originally yeah so but he, he vaguely i wanted to color in his eyes as well but i completely forgot about that so yeah he's he's all right uh i don't think you could tell he was ghost rider but <laughs> you could tell he's like a flamey skull boy basically yeah. looks like a looks like a character from uh my hero academia <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah so actually the jumper here that he's wearing genuinely does remind me a little bit of the ua uniform from uh my hero academia so uh i'm trying to think is there anyone with a quirk this oh well endeavor i suppose obviously but he's not a skeleton he's just a very big man right well who wants to go next go on go on um right so this first one i call aberration oh oh, oh. it looks like he's like funky dancing yeah i i kind of like that i, I like you know i mean i i wouldn't i couldn't tell you that was ghost rider but i i like it yeah oh, there was some bit of it looked like a cave drawing of ancient aliens or something <gasps> Ooh. Yo. what i'm getting Conspiracy, is man what I'm getting is he was riding on his bike and then he crashed into something and like started flying towards the camera and then it freezes ah. and it's like, yep, I bet you're wondering how I got into this mess. <laughs> yes. Oh, he's running away from the bike. <laughs> <laughs> the bike is committed. <laughs> it's like, it's like the uh, Stephen King's um, horror classic. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the Phantom uh, Bike. It, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, no. The 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 his From... book was called Christine, so I can imagine the other one would be called uh, uh, Claire. <laughs> yeah. So the next one, uh, is called Ghost Rider for Kids, with the number four kids. <laughs> of course, yeah. of course. Like you know, like the famous dubbing company. <laughs> <laughs> Hey kids! It's Remember, your... guys, fire safety is real cool. <laughs> it's your, it's your pal Ghost Rider. Hey, oh, chaps! Always brush your teeth. Go. Oh. I can kind of, oh. I could kind of tell it was Ghost Rider. You know, I think. If I you mean, give it a the, up. Would a flaming uh, Ghost Rider be uh, good for kids, though? I yeah, feel like. 
I feel like he featured in um, the Spider-Man cartoon at one point or another, I think. I, I think Ghost Rider has appeared on kid shows. So. Deadpool as well. Yes, Deadpool appeared in Ultimate Spider-Man. He's a cool guy. I, I would party with both of your drawings so far, Tom. No. Um, <laughs> so the next. <laughs> so the next one is Ghost Rider, the movie featuring Nicolas Cage. Oh God! Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh my God! That that is great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well done. Oh my god. You put them in alphabetical order. A, B, B, A. <laughs> Academy Award winner, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> That's, uh, that, that reminds me slightly of, I'm fairly sure there's Cosmic Space Rider, or like, uh, so, sorry, Cosmic Ghost Rider, or like Space Rider or something, I feel like he was called. Maybe they're um, thinking of Space Raiders, right? Oh, man. If only. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's very nice, Tom. I, I like that. Uh, bringing it all back together, combining two of my favourite things in life. Ghost Rider and Nicolas Cage. Who would like to go next? I'll, I'll go next. Okay. Um, okay, so... <laughs> the first one I like to call Aku Aku. Who's the moment of <laughs> yeah, you know, slightly menacing. Yeah, it's like you're picking up some mangoes and then suddenly a mat. Yeah, you put on a mat. Ghost Rider is there. Also, it kind of looks like right, a sort of like the symbol for a punk band or something. I was thinking that after I do it, like it looks like. A logo for something that exists, but I can't put my finger on where it is. I'm sure Everyone there's a logo. Mighty Boots. Um, mighty Boots. <laughs> um, kind of. Yeah. Oh, kind fucking of. Hell. Well, the, there's Offspring. Is it a Bizfit? Offspring. Well, yeah, uh, that's off, the one. Offspring. Oh, actually, yeah, Offspring. Yeah, that, that'd be better. I mean, it's but it's kind of like a low poly version, so it would be like a local Offspring cover band or something. On Spring. <laughs> exactly. Right, so the second one I like to call, oh, I've left the stove on. <laughs> <laughs> so, if he was a few shades greener, he would remind me of Blanka from Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Because sort of like, yeah, if you dyed him green, you could probably tell someone who was like Blanka in pain and they'd be like, oh yeah, yeah it is, yeah. Also, I was like, I need to make this look like fire, but I've got five seconds left. <laughs> So you've got some ketchup and uh, mustard, and you were like... Um. Funny story about Blanca. My, um, I used to... Uh, uh, I had the Street Fighter 2 on the, the 360, and for some reason, when I used to play with my sister, she'd always go for Blanca, but she'd, and she'd only know one button, and it was like that overpowered button where you just, you just choose on you. Um, the grab button? Yeah. She used to just chew. And she used to laugh while she did it as well. And I was just like, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, that was a fun story, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> so, the, the third one I like to call, Oh shit, we've awakened the Ancient One. Oh wow. Oh wow. I actually oh, like my that. God. That's. Wow. It's horrifying, but it's. I mean, given to this, you know, season's theme, I think if that creeped in my uh, bathroom, I would uh, probably uh, go out of that room and shut the door. And uh... also, <laughs> it sounds like you're doing it really calmly. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, no, I can't be dealing with. It's gonna go to bed. Also, yeah. kud kudos to you, Tim, because um, there's the judgment gaze, which is when he looks in someone's soul, and. It's it's said that they see something really horrifying that makes them want to repent. Yeah, so well, I was thinking along those lines, but then <laughs> as I was doing it, I was like, 
This kind of looks like in Diamond and Pearl when Giratina comes from the other Oh dimension. god, yes, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm liking the teeth. Is. Like he doesn't want to dream is too much. The teeth are super cool because, like, I like it. I don't know how you did it. They're slightly blurry, so it's like it looks a bit like a fever dream or something because it's like. <laughs> Yo, like, I can't really make out those teeth, but they're there. Like, yeah, well done, to Tim. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I like that. I would, you know, it's, uh, I, that, that would go up in a museum. There we are. Yes, I, I would, I would pay to visit that museum. Um, right, so, who wants to go next? Um, I, I guess it's me. So, oh, let's go. Let's go. Okay, so this one I call... So there's a, a, a song from um, a band and they uh, called Suicide, and they have a song called Ghost Rider, uh, Motorcycle Hero, it goes. But for this one, it's Ghost Rider, Motorcycle Loser. <laughs> I, well, uh, he... It, so, uh, there we are. Uh, another reminiscent thing. He looks like... Oh, God. They, they, I don't even know if Tim's going to get this reference. It looks like a kid sort of drew a... Um, so there was an Aaron car in Bleach called Barragan, who was a big skeleton guy. He was, like, really chunky, but he was actually, like, a really skinny skeleton dude inside. Uh, yeah. And it it kind of looks like him, in a sense, sort of. You can of. see the Aaron car, yeah. I, I, I'll put you there. I kind of got... You know when you get, like, a substitute teacher... And they just they just come in and they're like, well, I'm very disappointed in you guys. <laughs> they can't really properly tell you off, so they're just like, oh, come come on now, come on, it's not okay. Start behaving. <laughs> nice. my, my next one, it's Ghost Rider Motorcycle Loser Two. Oh, <laughs> the sequel. Alternative electric boogaloo. Oh God, he looks like he's got a job interview. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can imagine, like, um, what was what was the character's name? Uh, Johnny something was it? Uh, Johnny. Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze. That's the one. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. So Johnny Blaze, he's down in. Uh, was it hell? Was he? Yes. Pretty sure it was hell. Yeah. There yeah. we go. Hey, he's got an interview, and uh, and uh, he's like, so uh, what, what brings you down to hell? Well. You know, I, I kind of want to go up to the, the ranks. I want to get all the benefits and uh, have a better, um, you know, balance with my life. Well, he looks to me, right? Like, he's turned up to an interview or like, a car dealership or something. It's like, Johnny, uh, Johnny Blaze? Yeah, that, that's me. D does anyone else smell fire? Oh, it's not me. I'm not on fire. <laughs> no, of course. As he's, like, gritting his teeth, like, I hope no one sees the fire on my back. <laughs> And they're like, wait, do I smell a buick on fire? No, 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 that's that's the hot dogs <laughs> that I made. He looks very nice, though. I trust him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. And uh, the last uh, one, or movie, Ghost Rider 3, they should have stopped. Oh, that's oh. Not bad. Yeah. yeah. Very skeletal. He's on the Vespa. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Basically, it is it is Skeletor on a scooter, like running away from a blaze he's just started. But. <laughs> when... I imagine, it kind of looks like he's just, not, instead of a motorbike, he's just on a Segway. He's <laughs> <laughs> just slowly going away from, like, the blaze behind him. It's, I mean. If if you asked me who you were drawing, I do not think I'd ever tell you Ghost Rider. But <laughs> it's yeah, basically it's mischievous Skeletor after like setting the Tesco car park on fire and jumping on his moped. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I I like the effects of the fire as well. You've like drawn little bits of yeah, you know, Thank like. You. Ashes, beast. Oh, uh, embers. Sorry, rising into the sky. Really cool. I has he got tattoos on his chest? Um, Is that what it's meant to be? Oh no, that's just shading. I, oh okay. Uh, it was at the last moment. Ah. I was just <laughs> shading around. Um, okay. Because I I uh, thought he was some kind of like prison tats or something he's got. Well, it was meant to be his leather jacket and 
And I oh, if, I get you. If I went all black, it would just go into the uh, uh, background, yeah. and then I thought, hmm. Can I just say, I'm very disappointed with you all. I was expecting Sam's, but on fire. Oh, ah, yeah. we all we Pissed all missed that. I'm not disappointed. I'm proud of us that no one went <laughs> down that route. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for that uh, thing. So, this brings us to the last one. However, I've got a little bit of a different one here, and it's oh. got a few different rules. So, we've done two draw toys challenges. Uh, they're all spooky themed. But I thought, for the end here, I'd like to have a bit of a more chill thing and a bit more an, of an embrace of the art challenge in general. So, this time, I'm going to post a reference image and I want us all to draw it. But we're going to have just 10 minutes to be as artistic or creative as we want. So, it, it's more of a laid back kind of ending thing. Uh, we can just chat about it. So, I'm going to post, I just want us to draw a jack-o'-lantern, or jack-o'-lanterns, uh, and just everyone to be as creative as they want with it, really. Uh, uh, this is like a really open-ended thing, so there's no, there's no correct thing here. I just want everyone to draw a nice Halloween image to end the, the video okay, with. Okay, for how long? So we've got 10 minutes, um, just to, you know, they're, they're fairly simple, so let your imagination run wild, you know, do some backgrounds or draw some weird shaped jack-o'-lanterns or whatever, but so long as it's a jack-o'-lantern, just so I can end the video on a nice kind of like, you know, collage of wholesome yeah, yeah. Halloween stuff. <clears throat> uh, right, so we're going to go off and do that, and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so we are back from our spooky jack-o'-lantern challenge thing. Um, so I posted a picture of a jack-o'-lantern and gave everyone the task uh, to draw jack-o'-lanterns as they feel like uh, for 15 minutes. So we were going to do a 10, but we had a discussion. We thought 15 minutes really allows you to be creative and artistic. So... I shall post mine first. So these are going to be less accuracy and stuff and just see where our sort of imagination took us. So this is mine. Oh, oh I like that. Yeah, so, those are some nice jack-o'-lanterns. I, uh, I also snuck a owo reference in. Oh. Oh. I, like, I like the baby one. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's kind of, it's a, it's a nice family of jack o' lanterns. Um, if I had a bit more time, I'd have flashed out the like lights on the floor. That they, they don't really look. I like that though. I I will say right that you've even put detail into like the sort of the insides and the nose. Of each nose is different. I've noticed so. Yeah, I I went for variety and I. I mean, the good thing about the jack-o'-lantern challenge, so a bit of behind-the-scenes stuff, but I also thought it'd be perfect for us because you can't draw a bad jack-o'-lantern, really, because sort of wow. the, they never look symmetrical anyway, really. Yeah. So it's like, eh, it, it adds charm if they're derpy or weird-looking because it's a bit scary. I like it. It's really wholesome. Yeah, very I pure. like it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, right, who's up next? You want me to go? Okay. Yeah, certainly. Uh, did a similar thing to you, Red. Um, okay. I got inspiration off Google, but I added my own touches. Uh, oh, oh, and it okay. kind of, it isn't a copy of Google. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> wow. That's really <laughs> good. Years. Yo, that's really well done. Like, genuine. Yeah, the ears were entirely my addition. So I saw like a new wool pumpkin and thought, if I had a cat ears and a tail to that, it'd be very cute. Genuinely, right? Like, I almost thought for a second you just posted something you found on Google. Like, sincerely, that's, oh, re that's really well done. Like, especially the ears are like... I'd say the ears, yeah. They're well, fantastic. Well done, Tom. Holy crap. Nice 
So it's blushing. It, it, oh, yeah, yeah, it is. That was a last minute detail. Uh, and I thought it added to it. Definitely how pumpkins work. Yeah, God, every, very, very cute and wholesome. Everyone's going wholesome. Yeah. yeah. Incredibly wholesome. Right, cool. Who, who wants to go next then? Um, I'll go next. Okay. So mine is. I was inspired by. Have, has anyone seen the film Return to Oz? Uh, no. Yeah, maybe when I was like five. Is it, is it like a hook style film then? Where they no. Kind of do a, it's oh, okay. like a kind of like a sequel to Wizard of Oz, but it's of its own thing, and it's like basically Dorothy comes back to Oz and. Oh, I watched it as a kid, and it uh, doesn't it have like me... trippy scenes. Yes, it gives me the creeps. Generally, I think it's. Uh, I kind of want to rewatch it. Uh, so I was inspired by the Jack O' Lantern guy. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> so I'm cool. I'm getting. Um, I know it's not not what you were going for, but I'm getting Charlie Brown vibes, like peanuts. I was getting a Doctor Seuss vibe. Yeah, it, it's sort of like it, it's very sort of yeah. I, I'm Tim, Tim Burton vibes. Oh, I'm liking oh, yeah. the uh, I'm liking the the tree growing out of his hand as well. Yeah, yeah, very nice touch. That's very cool. Yeah, nice one, Daniel. Also, his his fingers are going through the Happy Halloween parchment. Yeah, because was... I thought because I was looking at the uh, the. The guy from, uh, well, I think his name is Jack or something, and yeah, it is actually. And like his hands are actually like sticks. Ah, so I see. So I was thinking, all oh, right, let's give him sort of that. So, so he's trying to be Happy Halloween, but like he can't actually hold it properly, so he has to like push it through, and like it went yeah. through the paper. It's a nice. Uh, oh, nice touch. Oh, nice touch. Also, yeah. I feel like he's like swapped his head out. Almost look like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, right? Uh, Tim, it's it's down to you. Well, I also um, went for a reference to a piece of popular media, and um, probably not not quite in the same vein as what Dan went for. This is probably maybe you know more well known. <laughs> Everyone knows this. It is. Um, I do warn you, a little bit scary. Oh, so, oh, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> wow so uh oh god this is gonna take so much explaining jesus christ like oh, no. i, I think, think everyone knows more of the bomb i'm pretty sure half my audience is in america uh <laughs> right okay so well actually i think let me check i, I gotta check this now whether it was people um originally was you may know her better as mona vampire so that's the that's the Welsh version. So, hey, all right, Red, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. More than the vampire is a Canadian French Chinese children animated television. <laughs> Excuse me, Canadian French Chinese. Yeah. Okay. Well. So right. The, okay. There's a chance that people in the audience know who Mona the Vampire is, but well, if you don't. Uh, in the very rare instant that you don't understand who Mona the Vampire is, who who is she, Tim? Well, well, the thing about Mona the Vampire is she's a nice, normal girl in an extraordinary world. That tells you all you need to know. That does. That does. Also, she likes to show you her fangs. She does. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was. It was a kid show about. A girl who always dressed as a vampire, I think. No, um, she was a vampire. Sorry, she was. A friend who was a giant, and another the guy was like a. Hey, look, I don't want to diss you, but the whole time was she pretended to be a vampire, and then all these sort of. So there was always some supernatural thing, but actually, towards the end, it was actually a rational explanation for what happened. Yeah, yeah. Like the yammering yam. Yeah. I uh, I I especially like as well that the pumpkin has joined in on uh, her look. Or yeah. well, so either she has decorated the pumpkin, or the pumpkin, being a big Mourn of the Vampire fan, decided to dress itself up as Mourn of the Vampire for Halloween. <laughs> and she looks slightly unimpressed. <laughs> it's got kind of that, uh, like Rugrats does. Like the kids see something different. And they <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, I'm. I'm I, um, she looks spooked. She generally looks spooked. That she wouldn't saw... you if you saw a pumpkin. That is true. Pumpkins yeah. are the scariest vegetable, especially root vegetables. Like like plot, plot twist. I am actually you. <laughs> That was... People have been talking, a bit off topic, but has anyone seen that In the Shadows series? Isn't that a song by the Rasmus? I... Uh, Wait, is, sorry, is, is it, it What We Do what in the Shadows? What We Shad Do in the Shadows. Yes, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen the film, but not like the TV series, but I've I got uh, good mates and they all say it's really good, so... Yeah, everyone's telling me it's good. I might watch it. So this actually brings me on to a topic. So I'm just going to cycle through some of these images now to end the um, end the video because I, I kind of wanted this as a more chill um, podcast type thing because I'm really not sure exactly the direction Draw Toys is fully going in. So I thought well, we'll experiment a little bit and for the last couple minutes of the episode, I have a question for everyone. Because it is the spooky time of year. Don't worry, I'll put an effect on my voice Jeez, so it'll 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 sound. Uh, it's too scary. Yeah. Uh, because it is that time of year. Now, I personally like to sort of get in the spooky spirit for the for the week of Halloween. Not not the entire month because it's a bit harder to keep up. But my question to you guys is: Do you have a go-to Halloween film, or if not a film, a Halloween tradition? Oh. Uh, I, I'll I'll go first. So every year around Halloween, there is two things I will watch. Uh, one, a very long-running tradition. One, uh, uh, a recent one. The long-running long tradition, and the kind of obvious choice, I know, uh, is Nightmare Before Christmas. I love that film. That is... Ooh, contra. It's... No, it is a Halloween movie more than a Christmas yeah, yeah, that's I, what I was going to say. It's a controversial I, thing. I, I appreciate I think, you could see yeah. it as a Christmas movie. Absolutely. Because, well, Christmas in the title and the plot developments about Christmas. But 80% of the movie takes place in Halloween Town. So, like, I don't know. I, watching it at Christmas would feel weird, I feel like. Because, sort of, you know, like all, think, all of the characters I, have, like, maggots falling yeah, out of them like, and stuff it's one like of the songs is Christmassy. the rest of them are spooky scary yeah it, I, what i gotta say is it's a yeah. perfect late november film oh yeah <laughs> to be honest right you can watch between. it any time of year it's a massive yes yeah, it is it's fantastic sorry what were we gonna say I, Dan? i the thing was i i'm in the opposite vein uh i remember watching it around uh the tw the 24th of of december so and when I watched it, I kind of, kind of always associated this as, as kind of Christmas. But the thing is, you I like I said, anybody said that you could watch it anytime, and um, so yeah. it's uh, yeah, and and I mean it, it basically it's just as well. Most of the songs are kind of Halloween and macabre themed. Sort of, it's all about like death thing, and you know things come in falling off. I just people. listen to. Um, just spooky music around ha Halloween. Like my go-to is uh, Ariel Pink with his song "Fright Night." Ah. Oh, really spooky! Actually, you just reminded me. Sorry, I've got a third tradition. Oh, wait, sorry. My second tradition. Uh, something I've watched the last two or three years in a row because I bought her on DVD on a whim. Um, is it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, which is a obviously Charlie Brown short from like the nineteen sixties. Um. It's like 20 minutes long it's it's incredibly charming it's like quite a wholesome thing but it, it's all it also like delves into like existential things and like oh, that, that's charlie brown down yeah. to his knees yeah so, like i wa i watched the christmas special last year and he's just like what is the meaning of everything what you know and uh yeah, I mean, well, the, the Great Pumpkin has a similar kind of thing, and that's like, hey, if you wait out in the graveyard past midnight, you'll see the Great Pumpkin, and it doesn't appear, and then Charlie's just like, well, why why do we do these traditions? We know they don't mean anything. We know they're not real. And it's like, I don't know, it's quite nice. But, th well, sorry, my third tradition yeah. um, is watching the entire music video, and not just the MTV cut, the entire video of Thriller by Michael Jackson. Because yeah. that is a uh, like, I I don't know what the budget was for that thing, but it's 
it takes the video aspect of music video and is just like, oh yeah, we'll we'll put a bit of music in here as well at a point. But it's just it's a Halloween short movie. It's great, and it's all on YouTube. So win win. So thriller and nightmare before Christmas. You're really pushing the boundaries of Halloween's there. Is. <laughs> I really am. I'm I'm really thinking outside the box. But no, like honestly, in terms of themes you know well i mean animal crossing is a good example but like loads of games and online services like to get in on things halloween is i think my favorite time of year because like oh yeah because i mean christmas is cool and stuff the things tend to be so like i I don't know not all that capitalism well i mean halloween is ostensibly very capitalist as well i think but like I don't know, it Christmas is just like it's all very cheery and stuff. Whereas I don't know, ha- Halloween is all about like it's this, but it's got a twist and it's I don't very know. fun. Yeah, it's very fun. I mean, like for example, I was gonna say some of the things I love watching. Are fi- I like watching uh, like slasher films around Halloween. Hmm. Mm. So you know, e- even the really bad ones. So one of my favorites that I've watched repeatedly since i was a kid which i probably should have <laughs> is a film called jason x oh yo it's, yes it's 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 jason but in space oh. <laughs> it, it's yeah. phenomenal it is the oh. one place capitalism can't reach <laughs> well that's the thing the the, the, the is our point where a lot of these uh uh horror guys they're like wait well We've done so many sequels, but where else can we put them? In space. You know, like, I'm pretty sure they are the Leprechaun. Yeah. Um, in space. I, f- I feel like it was Leprechaun in space. Yeah, it, sort of, it became a bit of a sort of running joke, to be honest. And it's like, oh, it's time to send this person into space. And, you know, you'd see, like, in The Simpsons or something. Genuinely, yeah. um, America has got Halloween movies down. Like, did you know? Yeah. I only saw Hocus Pocus last. Oh. No, a couple of years ago, I saw Hocus Pocus for what? the first time. And oh. yeah, I love it. I love those type of films. They're great. I like the really, f- you know, kid friendly ones like Hocus Pocus. Which I also is. like things like, you know, um, like Jason X, like I say. <laughs> There's just so many good films. My, my uh, favourite horror film is um, The Thin. 1982 version, just so I tell you. That is probably one of my favourite John Car... Well, I don't know, there's a lot of good John Carpenter movies, and like his music as well is like, uh, it's really good as well. Um, uh, big, uh, I don't know, it's not, it's not a horror movie, but uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, there's a music video of him out there as well. I just... I think I'd I'd put the thing as Carpenter's best. Like it, yeah. I I well I mean I own the thing on like some kind of special Blu-ray thing just because it ah oh, it, it's it's so good from I like got the VHS. Sorry, I got the button, but I got the VHS, but I got the Blu-ray, but it's in a VHS package. Ah oh, yeah, that. yeah. Um, it's the the thing. If anyone watching has not watched John Carpenter's The Thing from nineteen eighty two, as Dan said, absolutely do yourself a favor. It's like two hours um th- like everything is s- well it's special effects but they're all physical special effects and it it's i think it's, it's so like good. the i think it's a, well it's one of the best special effects films you you'll see um and they put out the thing that was made a couple of years ago it was with uh who's the, who's the lady from um uh oh mary elizabeth winstead oh, um, oh yeah She's in it, and like uh, I was Ramona. like, yeah, or oh, Ramona from uh, Scott Pilgrim. Anyway, but you know, like I I remember just watching like a trailer for it, and it's just all CGI, and and you just feel I not that I'm but hurt over CGI. I think there's there's good CGI like in Mad Max Fury Road, but there's also shit CGI. I I think and... part of the charm of the thing as well is that. It's very much a product of its time. You you can quite easily tell it's an eighties film, but I think that's like a specific thing with horror movies. Though I don't think you should ever remake a 
No. So much of the charm from horror movies comes yeah. from, you know, relating it to the time it was released. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, like... the the soundtrack to the thing, as Dan said, and because it was John Carpenter and er- Ennio Morricone, which is... Yes. What a combination. Holy crap. That, like... Rest in peace. Unusual yeah. combination that just really works. Yeah, and it's it just... It, it feels quintessentially 80s. And don't get me wrong, some people may not like it, the 80s aesthetic or whatever, or think it's a bit cheesy or whatever, but personally speaking, the thing is like... Well, <laughs> the thing is so popular that there is a very popular multiplayer online game at the moment essentially based around it called Among Us which is just space the thing in space a sense the thing. space yeah. um, the thing I'm hearing yeah. a lot about the Friday the 13th game actually a lot of people are Dan and I played that, that uh, oh, yeah. da- Dan and I streamed it live on twitch.tv forward slash space arcade what are you waiting for? Uh, oh. it it was it was pretty fun. I think um, because it, it's one of those uh, what do you call it the uneven uh, multiplayers. Yeah. Where kind of yeah. like you know. I and, think it's good with a group of friends, but it was just us two, and like after a couple of games, we just kind of got bored with it. Yeah, I I think it's it's a pretty fun game to play about two or three games, and then like. You know, just jump in for an hour and then kind of like I I can't see anyone getting like addicted to it. Is like, but as a as a fun little game to play on the side, playing as um as Jason is pretty fun, and you know playing as the campers can be pretty fun. So it it's got the tension down pretty well, which yeah. I liked. I um, I mean one of the somewhat of a tradition I guess of playing it every day, but I like. I've always played MMO since I was young, and like you say, the online services, they always do stuff for Halloween, yes. and it's always some of the best content of the year, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, what so I... I, I'm always playing those. What I quite really like. used to play um, a lot of Overwatch uh, yeah. around Halloween, yeah. and used to be really good. Like, um, oh, there was the, some great costumes. The Halloween... Overwatch thing was the second best event after Lucio Ball. Lucio Ball was hands down. Lucio Ball was amazing. The best uh, Overwatch but thing. I don't know. I I'd say they were in between because I really liked the Halloween segment of it. But I think the problem was is that the expectations were so high that when they kind of did the same stuff, yeah, like year after year, it just got very. Oh, is there anything new? And and so yeah, I've I've not played Overwatch since so. Um, but yeah, uh, for me, I, I like reading a lot of horror stories. Like at the moment, I'm reading through uh, H. P. Lovecraft, nice. and uh, his his horror stories are, are very much they kind of you know they they grow on you. You know, they're not like oh spooky monster. It's more like it, it's kind of like metaphysical in terms yeah. of the horror. It's sort of it's very. Well, I mean, it, it's it's one of the best types of horrors, which is the unreplaceable horror. The kind of like, you know it's out there, and you know it's doing something, but you cannot describe it or understand it with a human mind. Which oh, is... There's one called The Statement of Something Something. Uh, but I, <laughs> but uh, I remember it being just ten pages long, and I read through it, and I was just like, oh, really spooky. It's like these two guys who go down a crypt and some hmm. Uh, no, one guy goes down the crypt and the other guy is on, like, the telephone because it was made know. in the old, old times and and uh, he and uh, he's just listening to his uh, chum down the crypt and it's just really, really tense, so um, If, also, another recommendation for reading things, if everyone, if anyone is in the mood for a short horror read um, I recommend Stephen King's short story Jerusalem's Lot, which is what Salem's Lot became based on, basically. Oh. Um, and it's it's kind of a prequel to Salem's Lot in a sense because um, Salem's Lot is a very famous book, obviously about like a creepy mansion in um, in in a town. Maine. But in yes, it's in, Maine. in Maine. It's always in Maine. It's always in Maine. 
Um, but no, Jerusalem's Lot as a short story is like 30 pages and personally speaking is, I think, a lot more tense and dark than all of Salem's Lot. Um, and in the same collection, actually, I'm pretty sure, uh, of short stories by Stephen King, there's also another fantastic short story, Children of the Corn, which is then spun out onto really not that great films. So, uh, Tim, do you have any Halloween traditions? My my two things that I like to do every Halloween. There's two films I like to watch. The Omen, classic. Mm-hmm. Again, um, obviously the 76 version and, and, the, and that remake nonsense. <laughs> because it's very... It's one of those classic Halloween films that isn't jump scary because mm. that's what I don't like in my Halloween films. It's like reliance on jump scares and obviously it just goes into like you know psychological stuff it's, it's more interesting i think but hmm. oh yeah for I sure one that. of the uh, best horror films i'd say of recent years is the the conjuring and get out i thought i want to watch get out i i'd uh, hmm, i don't know i'd say get out is more like a, th- a psychological, psychological thriller that's more psychological. I wouldn't say it's like full on Halloween, but it's yeah. You you could watch it for Halloween for sure, but it's it's one of those things because it kind of it kind of falls a bit into the realm of sci-fi in a sense as well. Yeah, I was gonna say my other um, favorite Halloween movie to watch is a kind of a modern one, and honestly, one of my favorite movies <coughs> ever, Cabin in the Woods. Yes, oh, great uh, film. So yeah. like just it's a horror movie about horror movies basically it's just mm. it's such a when i first saw it i genuinely thought you know the film is called cabin in the woods it's just going to be a generic halloween movie yeah and i think that's part of why i enjoyed it so much because i did not know what to expect going into yeah. it mm. so when I... you start getting all the twists and it's like oh 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 right okay it was it, like it legit subverts the genre on its head literally so. Literally, yeah. exactly what yeah. it is. I'd say it was more of a like I like I wasn't really scared, but I just I just loved the dynamic of all the characters and and you know thinking where it's gonna go, and then you're like, what? Well, okay, or yeah. Uh, 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 and then it does my favorite thing that any movie can ever do to get me on board. Um, bring Sigourney Weaver out because Sigourney Weaver just makes any film worth watching. Okay, speaking of Sigourney Weaver. Alien. Now, I I really love Alien, and I also yeah. really love Aliens, but yeah. like, uh, for me, Alien is more scary for like the... Yeah. Alien is a horror. Aliens is a thriller. Aliens is like yes. full-on action, bring it on, uh, and I and I love it for that, you know, like, because Alien was like, oh, it's good, you know, oh. Oh wait, here's a kitty cat. I'm okay. And then, uh, no, and aliens is like she's in a bloody like mech. She's like, ah, oh, come on, bring it. And you're like, eh. what I really like about the Alien franchise is that they made two films and then stopped forever. That was great. <laughs> yes, yes, and <laughs> and um, that was the best thing that happened. The the Alien franchise yeah. is absolutely cursed. Yeah, you know what? I was um like hoping. Like when uh, they kind of, because uh, Ridley Scott, that's it, right? He was at the helm of like the newer. Don't say the one. p word. Don't say the fucking p word because it, it brings me to anger. It literally does. Cause I got I got my hopes up as well for that. And then pro, so, pro, pro, say it, don't pro, Prometheus. Ah. If you yeah. say it three times in a dark room, Ridley Scott appears. <laughs> Bring your hopes and dreams. Yeah, no, I honestly, we all had our hopes up, and it was just. Uh, <laughs> it was poo. I think. Yeah, my other Halloween tradition mm-hmm. is completely in a different direction now, but um, on a more lighthearted note. And I think for me, it really is quintessential Halloween because it does. It harkens back to, like, childhood and stuff. Yeah. But I'll always try and make sure I watch a Treehouse of Horror episode. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's so, like. Yeah very commercialised Halloween in a hilarious way. Because... Well, it's yes. um, self-aware. Yeah, that's exactly. why the, the, the golden age of the Sims, well, I don't know, they, even oh. now, 
but yeah, we they, do it. <laughs> not, it's just not as funny, no. but like it was fu funny. The reason they call it Golden Age because it was one of the first early on series that was self aware and they were just doing things nobody else was doing at the time. No, and, they just uh, reference celebrities and stuff. Yeah, pop yeah. culture, pop culture. Yeah. But uh, the yeah treehouse horror episodes I love I like I love the one where he um, Homer eats a donut and then uh, uh, Ned Flanders is the devil so then uh, it's his soul and then he eats it and then he goes down to hell and then this, this demon's uh, like yes. oh, you love donuts do you then have all the donuts in the world and he just keeps eating and it's just. I just realized we really do sound like grumpy old men because every time someone's like excitedly what? mentioned something they really like about Halloween, we're like, yeah, but then it went to shit. <laughs> I think. Fuck it. Fucking my day. Fucking my day. We had more than a vampire. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> At least they haven't remade that touch word. To be honest, I think that that is the trouble with. Uh, horror things because um, I mean I'm kind of tying it back to we were discussing Alien uh, just earlier I think Alien perfectly proves why horror films are hard to remake or reboot in that Alien was really tense and you know delivered all that it meant to do but I feel like if Aliens they try to make it tense and the kind of like reveal was I don't know another alien or something. Mm. I feel like it wouldn't have paid off because 100%. they've done it already, and I think that's th that is the unfortunate thing with uh, with horror franchises is that they'll have a great idea, they'll execute it brilliantly, they'll you know make it scary and unnerving, but because it's commercially successful, they then go, we need to do that again, and that's I think that's the wrong mindset to have because particularly you, for how, for horror. Yeah, because you're if, you're scared once, but you're not scared by the same thing again, sort of. And eventually they go, oh right, okay, we're running out of ideas. Oh, what if we um face these two bad guys <laughs> off from two different horror franchises? So actually, this ties so in perfectly. Um, so I I I last year bought the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street collection on DVD because I saw it in a charity mm -hmm. shop, uh, and I watched through all of them. There's like five films no the seven films sorry the seven nightmare uh nightmare on elm street films and the final one genuinely kind of impressed me right because you know all of them are sort of like oh no people are dying in their sleep and stuff because they're dreams but the last one was set in the universe where nightmare on elm street is a film series and they started like being basically like the person who plays freddy krueger was a character in it who was slowly possessed by freddy krueger it was like so crazy like, wow. like it so incredibly meta i mean it was it was kind of cheesy and like nothing genuinely shocking or surprising happened to be fair but i was genuinely kind of impressed it's like you guys actually did it you went so like full circle and meta that you're just like they just like it was ah oh, is insane. Like if you've ever been interested in the Nightmare on Elm Street series, maybe give like the final one a watch because it's it's just it's so weird. Like it just very strange. Uh, Evil Dead. Yes, uh, uh, Army of Darkness for sure is. Uh, man, I really need to rewatch that. Actually, it's been years, but ah, uh, Army of Darkness is great. Damn, we watched it in, uh... in the cinema, yeah, yeah, the local cinema, and that was, that was incredible. It uh, was, it was great hmm. experience. Have you guys watched Evil Dead One and Two? I've only seen the second one, believe it or not. I haven't so, seen Army of Darkness either. So it was interesting because I I bought all three uh, because I'd heard really good things about Army of Darkness. I was like, oh well, I might as well watch the first two. And it's super weird. So Evil Dead is quite a straight-played horror. You know, basically, teenagers go to a cabin in the woods. Yeah. And, you know, they find the Necronomicon and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, demons chase them. So Evil Dead 2 is basically a remake, but it was kind of weird because it's slightly... 
funnier. Yeah. Oh, actually, oh, it's uh, incredibly that, funny. That is like the version we we watched on. Right. Yeah. Okay. So because it's essentially yeah, Evil Dead was yeah. Uh, it's just... kind of weird because Evil Dead was just evil. I remember having it. I was watching it with the girlfriend at the time, and I was like, "Oh, well, I thought it was okay," hmm. and and then didn't really think of it, and then watched Evil Dead uh, to because it was like a double back. It was like some indie ah. horror film that was made, um, in that, yeah, and uh, Evil and then Evil Dead Two was like a back to back, and I was watched that and I was like, "Yo, this is nothing like the film I watched." So. Ah. That's what I was going to say. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, ah. Complete U turns in horror movies. Wreck one. Fantastic. Wreck oh two, my god. Fantastic. Wreck three. What oh the god. Hell? So for. <laughs> what did for... Wreck do? The first two were so phenomenal. Oh, they were still. Uh, so they were for like the. Uh, for... Best examples of found footage movies. Like. For the listeners at home, uh, it's the REC films, as in recording, so R-E-C. Um, yes. Are they Spanish, is it, I want to say? Yeah, they're Spanish. So REC 1 and 2, uh, well, they also did that really cool thing, where REC 2 takes place like 30 minutes after the events of REC 1. Yeah. And yeah. both of them are incredible. Like, they, they are incredibly tense. They're just like... It, Everything, there we are. That's a great example of a modern horror film, and oh, yeah. Yeah. a modern horror film doing a sequel correctly. Because, I mean, technically they kind of did what they did in the first wreck, but I feel like the point was a continuation rather than a kind of like, no, it's back. It worked because of the way they ended the first one. Like it led on really well, and there were things set up for it. It wasn't like a cash grab situation and you could tell by watching it but yes. then the third one uh the, the third one had i think like a different studio working on it and it to be fair right very enjoyable still i think 100 oh, yeah, but loved it, it uh, as you said it 180 Wrong. degree it is a schlocky action horror film with uh, characters like john sponge oh it's <laughs> Yeah. Like, they saw Evil Dead and thought, let's do what Evil Dead did. Possibly. Like, Evil Dead 2 to 1. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. But I like, it's such a quirky, like, humorous way. Very strange. And then he went on to do Spider-Man. Uh, after Evil Dead, not Wreck, obviously. <laughs> no, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry. They did uh, remake Wreck. Um, I haven't seen it, but oh. I heard it's... No. I don't know. Someone yeah, told me it was old enough to just be as good. Made. What's the point, though? Uh, they wanted an English language version, yeah. didn't they? Uh, well, the people can't read the subtitles. Yeah. Fantastic film. Recommended to literally everyone. Um, it's so, a shame because found footage is often really bad. Don't yeah. get started on paranormal activity. Well, That's a really good example of found footage. Um... So, oh my god, people what? are like moving about everywhere, it's so scary. That's, so. What, that's my number one pet peeve in horror movies, right? If a ghost is like <laughs> haunting your house, no, this is, this, I'm so serious about this, if a ghost is like haunting your house, why are they just going to move some furniture around? <laughs> if they've got evil intentions, they're going to try and kill you. They're not going to do it by like, you know, hovering a chair in the background or making you jump by jumping out of a cupboard or something. If they're going to try and hurt you, they're going to try and hurt you, not like gently move things in the background. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's too crazy. And uh, nursery volumes and shit. Yeah, yes, thank you. <laughs> or like with in trailers, they have like, because I've noticed, right? Because I got um, hammer. I got uh, basically, I got like a virtual keyboard for 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 making music and stuff. And it, uh, the it comes up with these sort of preset sort of sounds. And one of them, right, is like you press uh, one thing on the key, and it sounds like dun. And they, and I was like, holy shit, that is played in every single movie trailer or horror thing. And I'm like, oh, I could just do it right now. Bang. <laughs> I heard something in the woods. So, so for the next part of this and closing out the uh, segment oh. and the episode, 
Does anyone have any plans for this Halloween? Well, well, you, we were talking about this actually. We want to play um, Phasmophobia. Oh yeah. There we are. That oh, is. No. Uh... Um, I, I we should be able, I, I should be able to run this. Yeah. Oh, of course. Definitely. Run it doesn't the look that hard to run. Because what what I'm really interested to try out is like um the voice thing, like the the fact that if someone goes far away from you or if they're in a different room. If you use the in-game voice chat, you can't hear them. That, uh, it, it's a really simple, like really simple thing, but it just it makes it really immersive, I think. So I'm, I'm up for playing that. I'm yeah. definitely up for playing that. Yeah, there we go. It's very cheap, four players, so that's all four of us. Uh, Perfect keep, number of people. Keep an eye out uh, in the uh, description below. I may have linked my Twitch. I could potentially look into maybe streaming it as well. That'd be fun. Oh. Yeah. That'd be good on you too. Uh, yeah, I'll. Well, I I may I may not do that as I'm trying to I'm trying to kind of keep gaming things to Twitch to be honest. Uh, yeah. usually, but yeah, we we'll, we'll we'll look into that. I've um myself, I have two movies planned that I've not watched that I'm gonna watch this Halloween. Uh, because as it happens, I have the week running up to Halloween off from work. Uh, and th there's two things I've really wanted to watch for a while. So the first one is Itchy the Killer, which is a uh, very That's well known. The cat from uh, yeah. The Simpsons, yeah. <laughs> does he uh, does he like itch people to death? No, no, this is unbearably uncomfortable. No. So it's a um, it's quite a famous Japanese kind of. It's quite is is an over the top gory horror film basically. Um, it's sort of it's known for its like gruesome, gruesome Ichi scenes. Okay, I'm gonna have a look. So I C H I Ichi as in like one, um, and yeah, it, along the lines of kind of something I know that Tom and Dan have seen, uh, is kind of like Tokyo Go Police, but oh god, it was from oh, it was from like a previous era where. It wasn't played for like laughs and ridic. Well, I think it was played for like ridiculousness, but like Itchy the Killer is quite notorious for being like gruesomely over well, the top violent. I'm looking at the wiki. It came. Uh, it was released in two thousand and one. Yes. Yeah. So, you know. Um. So yeah. So that's the that's on the list. The other one, uh, which I'm quite looking forward to watching. I don't know if it will be as good as I've heard in reviews. But um, I bought on DVD in a local charity shop, uh, The Witch, or The Vavitch, as it's written. I have that, but I've not seen it yet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I've seen that one. Bear with me. I, I'm going to check if that's the one I did. If it's the one I've seen, it's absolutely fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, I, I've heard, um, I, I've heard really good things in that it gets, like, tension and build-up and everything perfect, which... I, well, <laughs> as we've discussed, is incredibly rare with horror films, so... Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to those two, especially. Uh, you know, just yes, it is the one I've seen. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's genuinely terrifying. It nice. was really goddamn spooky. I'm. I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah. Uh, unfortunately, obviously, none of us will be going to any Halloween parties this year. Uh, or trick or treating, unfortunately. That is very true. But uh, that I think that about wraps everything up for this episode. Um, this will be coming out either the day before or on Halloween. So uh, either way, if you do happen to be watching this on Halloween, happy Halloween to you. Uh, let us know down in the comments, actually, what your favourite Halloween tradition or movie or whatever. Uh, and you know what? We'll probably read it out on the next episode, because why not? We're kind like that. Right? Right, guys? Right? Yeah. Sure. yeah. In a goofy voice. Awesome. Well... <laughs> Thank you, uh, all of you, for joining me and contributing to yet more amazing pieces of art. But yeah, so that that uh, is everything, I think. Uh, thank you all very much for joining me, and thank you all very much for watching. I will be doing more Draw Toys in the future, and um, yeah, and other videos. So until next time, goodbye!